introduce our next guest, a young filmmaker, totally on the rise, up to some super cool stuff, zooming in with us from Israel today. And right now, let's take a look at this. So you got the job of the leader, huh? Yeah, yeah. A classic lead. I got almost all the lines in the play. Wow. Miss Crystal, last year, we promised that I'd have a speaking role. Hey, in the last year, we'll see you, so at least it's a good job, no? It's not a I was thinking, now we can show Miss Crystal that we're way more than just background. But we're supposed to be background. We're trees. Well, we can be special trees. Trees that dance, sing, talk, throw accents. When she sees us, she might even give us some lines. What exactly do you want us to feel? No, no, no feeling. Just posing. Miss Crystal, I'm an actor. I can get rid of any accent. They probably laugh at us. No, they'll love us. Wish me luck. So it's my pleasure to introduce Omer Ben Shafar, the writer, director, creator of Tree Number Three and all kinds of other cool stuff on the way. Omer, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm super excited. Thank you so much for being here. So just for our audience's viewing, I've known Omer since before he was born. And <laughs> very proud to say his family have been family friends for a very long time and watched him grow into this amazing and talented filmmaker, dancer, artist, just super creative guy. Omer, you, you've had your finger in absolutely everything. Share a little bit of your story with us. Thank you so much. Nobody's ever introduced me as a dancer uh, before, <laughs> but I think you really remember the history because in, in second grade or something, I, I danced in Houston Ballet for, for a few years, but I haven't, I haven't been doing it since. Yeah, so I um, grew up in, Israel, in Tel Aviv and then when I was um, about eight, we moved to Texas uh, for a couple of years and I lived there. Um, that's kind of where my, the short film that you saw the trailer for Tree Number Three is, is set. It is based on my experience in Texas and then moved back to Israel and then moved back to LA a few years after to pursue uh, filmmaking. So yeah. Well, um, Omer, it was wonderful to watch, and I felt such a connection because haven't we all been in that position, either literally or figuratively, where yeah. if we're just like, it, it's either coach put me in the game or it's I'm a tree, but I could, I, could, I could be the star or it's in business, you know, just give me a chance to, to make an impression. And, and I think that you really captured those emotions that are really universal to everyone. But that really, that it really did bring me back to about third grade. And I remember some yeah. of feelings. <laughs> it was, it was Boy, so, we were so all well done. Right? So well done. All the tree. Yeah. So, so richly textured and layered and you are very talented. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. The, 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 you know, the thing we enjoyed most when we started screening the movie was how such a specific story you know, that was a very kind of small story about, you know, just a little boy who didn't get cast in the role he was given. Um, and how, you know, broad, how many people, how many experiences people have that were similar to this from many, many different fields, you know, unrelated to performing arts, just of, you know, being defined as somebody you're not or somebody that's meant to be in the back and how we some, you know, how we try and fight those definitions or fit those definitions or try and do both. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, you connected with. Yeah, I, I, think, I think everyone who watches this show will be able to connect with it. It was, it was really nicely done. So what do you um, see yourself doing from here? What kind of genres are you interested in? Um, what are, what's your uh, direction as a filmmaker? Yeah, I think um, tonally, Tree Number Three is definitely the kind of movies I'd want to be making. Um, they're called dramedies, is what I was uh, taught very early on in when I came to Atlanta. I, it didn't make sense to me, then somebody just said it's comedy and drama. Um, 
but I think projects that are, but really, you know, it's just projects that are, the projects I'm going to be working on are ones that feel authentic and honest and share some sort of experience that feels real to me that other people can connect to. Because, you know, the movies I love to watch, when cinema really moves me or inspires me, it's when I see something that happened to me too, kind of, you know, emotionally or actually. And then you see yourself, you see yourself in it and you just kind of feel, you know, a sense of belonging and feel like you're living, you know, with people who are living the same, on the same planet as you. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the kind of movies I like and that's the kind of movies I want to make. Movies that people from anywhere can connect to and, yeah, and see themselves in it. So it's one thing to actually see a story and, and want to write it, but then it has its inherent challenges in the writing itself. So how do you get started? What's your creative process? Yeah, that's tricky. I mean, there's challenges in every, you know, in the writing is where it all starts. And then later in the directing and in the filming and in the editing. And um, But I think in the writing, the hardest thing when you start a project is there's so many unknowns. You don't really know. You just start with something, you know, whether it's a gut feeling or an experience or an image, but you have nothing to lean on and you're building this huge thing. But at any moment, you can go back to stage one and realize you made a mistake there, you know? So you're really building so much. And every time I develop something new, that's the hardest thing is how do you know that you're doing the right project? How do you know that what you're writing is interesting for anybody to watch? And how do you know that, you know, you, you're telling the best version of the story or, you know, that it all adds up. So, that's really the biggest challenge in it. Same thing later in directing, you're making all these choices, you know, casting choices, location choices, but often they're, they're also building on choices you didn't make yet. You know, you cast one character, but you have no idea who the brother is or the sister or the parents or the best friend. And, you know, you set a location, but you don't really know if the scene's going to be set there or in someplace else. So that's the hardest challenge, I think. Yeah. I have a question based on um, something that you said earlier. You know, you have a pretty global perspective, right? Having grown up um, in two different, really grown up in two different places. And some of that um, of a more global and diverse perspective comes up in your work. And, and you mentioned, you know, how we all have that, that common human experience. So how do we, and I'm going to make this more broadly applicable to the generation that you are part of, how do we, how do we imitate what you've done in film into real life? What are some ways that we can be more diverse and authentic and help others uh, celebrate individuality, but also come to, you know, a, a common human experience and understand each other? Right. Well, I think it's the best way to celebrate individuality, which I, I love that you said, is just to be yourself, really. So when you, I think Charlie Kaufman or somebody said this, but when you go to a party, we don't need somebody that, you know, repeats something he heard before or quotes that you already know or, you know, views that somebody else has, but really be yourself because when you express who you are authentically, that's when I think real connection can can be formed and I think same thing artistically you know is when you tell your story really say who you are mm -hmm. you know honestly and authentically and not hide any part of you know because in even in tree number three there's a lot of shame in being mm -hmm. different and there's a lot of insecurities and you know we didn't expose just one side of the character we showed all sides um and I think that's what makes us feel connected. Mm, I love that. So based on um, that, you know, you take what you were doing, which is authentic and like, pr you know, promoting our individuality. And then you see there's more than ever we've, you know, my daughters are on TikTok imitating dancers all day long. Right. And 
there's so much pressure in society, especially in younger generations to conform and to, yeah, yeah. It, there are two different things at play. They say, be yourself. And they say, be yourself like this, you know? Exactly. exactly. That's so interesting. You, you bring that up because I, the project I'm just writing is kind of dealing. That's probably why it came up, right? Cause I've been, I've been thinking about this all day long, but it's really the, this um, contrast between being your best self, mm-hmm. improving yourself, which I think is it, all the Instagram and everything. We see all these other people's lives and we want to be a better self mm-hmm. and we want to improve all these things. And then we also just need to know that who we are is enough. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a conflict I'm dealing with every day. Mm-hmm. You know, um, belonging. what is belonging? Is it trying to conform and be like the people around you or is it being standing out and being different mm-hmm. it's a balance you know because both both i mean i want to say you should be just unique but that's a hard thing you can't always do that you know and it so yeah because you are a product of your environment in some ways as well right right so, um so for and you want to be your best self i mean you want to improve and, and 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 become better than who you are and you hope you can change the qualities you don't like about yourself but on the other hand, you, and that's really the message of tree number three is, you know, he kept trying to be somebody else so he can give the lead. And right. he really won when he was himself. And um, I, I think you, I think you do that so authentically and your, your work is fresh and you are able to manage that balance. So like for people like my children, for example, who kind of have a knack for videography or someone who wants to express creatively, what advice do you have for, for people who are aspiring to do what you're doing to maintain that balance between, you know, trying to uh, conform in some ways to a genre, but then also be fresh and authentic? Right. I mean, like craft, I'm not sure if, if you mean craft, but, but like craft wise, I think you should just go for, I mean, you should just do it and, and, and not give up early on because, you know, it's really a lot of it comes down to, I mean, you know, that's what I just, what I, I now I'm repeating what I've been told, but it's true mm-hmm. is just to put in a lot of hours of work into what you want to do. So that also requires you to believe in yourself because you're putting like, you know, so many hours on a project that can fail, you know, that can not work out. And you really have to believe that you, even if you're not sure what you want to say or what you're seeing exactly, you have to believe, like take a leap of faith and hope that you're on a path of making something Mm -hmm. that's, that's valuable. But, you know, for me, I really, the way I approach it is just writing as a way to talk about all the things that I'm not sure about in my life or that I feel insecure. It just, it, it became like really a survival tool for doing something with the things I don't know what to do with, you know, of bad experiences with things I don't have the answers to. Um, I put it into writing. So that's what, as I'm putting these, you know, hours of improving the craft, I'm also just, finding it to be a tool of living, of life, of Mm -hmm. being able to take all these weird experiences that we have in life that are so contradictory and, you know, messy and beautiful sometimes and heartbreaking and hopeful and, you know, all these emotions and being able for yourself, before you think about, what's going to happen with the project and who's going to watch it is just how valuable it is for yourself to be able to put it into art and mm. make something out of it. And I think that's true of, of any art, you know, is any art really uh, of, of that involves self-expression and interpreting your experiences. Spoken like a true writer. For writing's sake at all, are you, are you writing as, more as an expression and then selecting the projects that you actually move forward into film or are you actually writing with the intention of bringing the story to life through film? Um, sorry, could you repeat that once more? Sure. Are you writing just because you need to write because it really helps oh. you 
or are you, and then deciding from those writings which ones are worthy to move forward to film, or are you writing with the film in mind as you're putting the expressions down in words? I mean, I think at this point, I, I do kind of, when I have an idea, kind of, I see the, you know, three act structure where you kind of know, oh, okay, this is how the movie, this is the movie version of the experience. So I do kind of have this filter in my mind that to be honest, I mean, it's always good to learn these things, but sometimes you want to unlearn them because I, I filter so many ideas that could work amazingly, but I'm, I just, I'm like, oh no, this is not a movie. But of course it's not. I didn't even start writing it, you know? It's going to take time. <laughs> so it's always tricky, you know, with knowledge. Like the more you do something, the more you're kind of, oh, okay, I, I can prevent the mistakes. But sometimes I tell myself, just write the mistake. Make the mistake. Because you'll, you'll find surprises in there. So sometimes it's really tiny. A lot of times it's about structures. Like I have an idea, but I'm, I tell myself, well, no, it's too small what's the journey that's going to happen in act two, you know, what's the, um, what's about, I, I, it's less about like the audience or the theme. It's, it's more about, can this idea sustain, you know, an hour and a half? Mm -hmm. And is there enough things that I could add? But like I said, of course, in the beginning, usually I think for me right now, it's no. And then I think about it more and then I say, oh yeah, oh yeah. And sometimes a lot of ideas get combined. That's my favorite part is like you write something you say, okay, it's not working. You put it aside. You write something else. <laughs> Either it becomes that old idea or it becomes part of it. But I think there's, I don't remember where, I read all these things and I don't remember where I read them. So I, I don't, I can't even, I don't know who I read this from, but it's an author who said, don't, you know, if you don't switch ideas because you're going to write the same thing. You're just writing the same story. You're going to come up to the, same thing, which is always interesting. I think I love to do with like new people that I, I don't know is ask them like what their three favorite movies are. And I mean, this is also again, an exercise somebody else taught me, but I'm obsessed with it because you ask all these people, you know, three movies that you would take on an island. So three movies you love so much. And then you go to their climactic scenes, the scene where, you know, the character makes a choice and you see what the choice is, you know, whether it's what, what the underlying theme behind the choice, whether it's, you know, um, love wins or, you know, um, I don't know, be yourself or um, whatever it is. And you see it's the same choice that all the, these movies make. Wow, so kind of, that's interesting. We're kind of drawn to, it's, it's exciting and depressing at the same time because like, wait, you're just one theme, you're, you just have one theme, but I think we are drawn to a certain kind of story from very early on like my movies are like from childhood you know and there's still like you see like whoa ratatouille and elf and little miss sunshine and legally blonde and spider-man yeah, i was just gonna say legally blonde is my favorite show i love I that movie. It. Too, yeah. i watched it every single day for three months after i got divorced and i thought if she uh -huh. can do it so can i <laughs> Well, journey, the hero's journey is that for a reason, right? That's right. We need that's the right. hero, we need the advisor, we need the guide, and then we need an outcome. And 99.9% and .9 of us need a happy outcome. That's right, we do. Yep. So, Omer, before we, before we have to say goodbye, and we will definitely have you back, give us an idea of what we can look, what are we looking for next from you? What's coming up? Huh. I mean, there's still tree number three uh, that um, is playing at festivals. So you could uh, take a look at, we have a website, tree number three film.com where we post about like future screenings and hmm, other things. I, well, I'm, I'm writing all these different projects. So hopefully once they move forward, you'll, you'll hear about them. Um, yeah. And I, I just did a um, TV directing workshop. So it was the Warner brother directing workshop which was super exciting and you know tv directing is you know different and similar to film directing but it's kind of a lot of different worlds and the viacom directing program where i shadowed a director on a nickelodeon tv show and yeah hopefully you hear about the um, the new project that i'm, I'm developing
Well, we'll send our viewers to tree3film.com and hopefully in not too long a time, we'll all be able to meet in LA again and have yeah. the show in, right. well, in the studio. Yeah, Thank that's you so much exciting. for joining us. You're our first international Zoom call. So. Oh, awesome. Cool. <laughs> You. Thanks for having me, and um, great to meet you, Amy. And um, thank you, thank you, Amir. Thank you, thank you again. Yeah. Pleasure. And we'll be Thanks. right back.